Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton and I'd like to talk to you for a little bit today about the impulse momentum theorem. Our objectives are going to be to derive the impulse momentum theorem, to use impulse to solve a variety of problems, and to interpret and use force versus time graphs to help solve impulse momentum problems. So let's dive right in. Deriving the impulse momentum theorem is fairly straightforward. If we start with what we already know, that impulse, J, is a change in momentum, which is therefore a change in mass times velocity, you then realize that really most of the time mass isn't changing. It's the velocity that's changing. So we could rewrite this as M delta V. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do an old math trick. If you multiply anything by 1, you get the same thing. Whether you multiply it by 1, whether you multiply it by 3 over 3, which is also 1, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom here on the right side by delta t. And delta t over delta t is 1, so we have the same quantity. This is still true. But with a little bit of rearrangement, if we look here, we have delta v over delta t. We can rearrange this now to say that impulse is delta P, which is now M A acceleration delta T, because delta V over delta T is your acceleration. Well, we learned from Newton's second law that mass times acceleration is your force, so we could rewrite this as impulse as change in momentum is force times some change in time, some time interval. And that is the impulse momentum theorem. J equals delta P equals F delta T. What it's really saying is when an unbalanced force acts on an object for a period of time, a change in momentum is produced, and this is known as an impulse. So impulse J is a change in momentum, and that occurs when a force acts on an object for some period of time. This is a very useful equation, and I'll show you a couple ways we can use this. In our first problem, a tow truck applies a force of 2,000 newtons on a 2,000 kilogram car for a period of three seconds. First, let's find the magnitude of the change in the car's momentum. To do this, we recognize that the change in momentum from the impulse momentum theorem is force times time, which is going to be 2,000 newtons, our applied force, which was applied for a period of three seconds, which gives us a total of 6,000 newton seconds. By the way, a newton second is equivalent to a kilogram meter per second, because a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared times a second. The square and the second cancel out, and we're left with 6,000 kilogram meters per second. The units are equivalent. They work out. Very convenient here. Now, for part B, if the car starts at rest, what will be its speed after three seconds? Well, a couple ways we can do this, but following along from our impulse momentum theorem, the change in momentum of the car is going to be its final momentum minus its initial momentum, because delta P is final minus initial. Delta anything is final minus initial. So that's going to be mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So if we rearrange this equation a little bit for velocity final, we find that velocity final is going to be change in momentum plus mass times velocity initial all divided by the mass. Well, the change in momentum we just determined was 6,000 newton seconds. So that'll be 6,000 newton seconds plus m times initial velocity, which was zero, so that's zero, divided by 2,000 kilograms. Therefore, we find out that the final velocity is going to be 6,000 over 2,000, or three meters per second. Very good. Let's take a look at another example, another application of the impulse momentum theorem. If we have a two kilogram body initially traveling at a velocity of 40 meters per second east, if a constant force of 10 newtons due east is applied to the body for five seconds, find the final speed of the body. Well, to do this, let's start with the impulse momentum theorem. We know that force times time 
is our change in momentum, which is also mass times change in velocity. Therefore, change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, or in this case, with a little bit of rearrangement, force times our time interval divided by the mass. Therefore, we can solve for the final velocity with a little bit of rearrangement to say that that's going to be force times our time interval divided by mass plus initial velocity. Now we substitute in with units. Our force was 10 newtons. This was applied over a time interval of 5 seconds. Our mass is 2 kilograms. And the initial velocity of our object was 40 meters per second. So 10 times 5, 50 over 2 is 25, plus 40 is going to give us a final velocity of 65 meters per second. Answer C. Another application of the impulse momentum theorem. Let's see if we can't go a little bit further. A motorcycle being driven on a dirt path hits a rock. Its 60 kilogram cyclist is projected over the handlebars at 20 meters per second into a haystack. If the cyclist is brought to rest in half a second, find the magnitude of the average force exerted on the cyclist by the haystack. Another application of the impulse momentum theorem. We know that impulse is change in momentum or mass change in velocity or force times time. This is just going to tell us then that if we rearrange this that we can get the force equal to mass times change in velocity divided by time. Well, if you recall, mass times delta v, that'll be v final minus v initial over time, or 60 kilograms, the mass of the cyclist, times final velocity, 0, minus the initial velocity, 20 meters per second, divided by the time over which this occurs, half a second, which gives you a total force of negative 2,400 newtons. Now, it asks for the magnitude of the average force, so our answer would be 2,400 newtons. The negative sign just tells us that that's in the opposite direction of what we called positive. The cyclist was traveling one way. The force on the cyclist bringing him to rest, him or her to rest, was in the opposite direction. So our answer, 2,400 newtons. One last problem before we look at graphs. In an automobile collision, a 44 kilogram passenger moving at 15 meters per second is brought to rest by an airbag during a 0.1 second time interval. What is the magnitude of the average force exerted on the passenger during this time? Well, we'll go back to the impulse momentum theorem. J equals change in momentum, which is force over some time interval. And we want to know average force. So let's rearrange this to find force which is equal to change in momentum over our time interval. That's going to be change in momentum, final momentum minus initial momentum over our time interval. The final momentum of our passenger must be zero, brought to rest, minus the initial momentum of our passenger. That's the mass of our passenger, 44 kilograms, times our pas passenger's initial velocity, 15 meters per second all over the time interval over which this occurs, 0 0.1 seconds. And I plug that into my calculator. I come up with a value of about negative 6,600 newtons. Again, it asks for magnitude in this problem, so our answer would be 6,600 newtons. The negative sign again indicates direction. The passenger was traveling one way. The force that brought the passenger to rest was in the opposite direction. All right, before we move on, what happens when you have a non-constant force? Well, if you can make a graph of the force versus time for the non-constant force, the area under the force time curve is the impulse or the change in momentum. So with this example here, we've got a force versus time graph in the shape of a triangle. Determine the impulse applied by calculating the area of the triangle under the curve. Well, the impulse is just going to be the area 
of that triangle. And as you recall, the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. Or one-half, the base of our triangle goes from zero to ten seconds, so our base is ten seconds. Our height goes from zero to five newtons, so our height is five newtons. One-half times ten times five gives us twenty-five newton seconds. That easy. The area under a force versus time curve is the impulse or the change in momentum. Hopefully this was helpful. If you need more information on the impulse momentum theorem, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks. Have a great day.